Hello, my friends. The occupies continue to deploy troops to the occupied territory and increase the number of attacks. But it seems we have found ammunition for the HIMARS systems. And today it became known that strikes were carried out yesterday on the villages of Rudivske and in the area of Ginichas. Today, February 20th, 2024, at about 9 o'clock, a missile strike was carried out on a military training ground located in the village. Trudovsko, Volnavaka district, Donetsk region. This facility provided training for military personnel of the 39th Separate Guards Motorized Rifle Brigade, Military Unit. 35390, Yuzno Sokolinsk. The rocket attack came at a time when military personnel were forming up at the training ground. The strike was carried out by three HIMARS MLRS missiles. As seen again, the destruction by Russians has resumed not on the front line, but in the rear, which is very important. So the second strike was in the Ginichesk district. There are also reports of explosions there, but details are not yet available. Now, let's move on to the situation along the front line, starting with the Cupid's direction. Here, the occupies conducted two attacks on Sinkivka in a day and continue to intensively shell all frontline settlements. They haven't achieved any success and the front line remains unchanged. So there is no significant activation observed here yet. In the Svatova direction, the occupies shelled Karamzanivka. There is a possibility that the Ukrainian forces are attempting to advance there, but there are no official statements on this matter. In the Krimina direction, Fighting continues near the village of Terne, with shelling persisting along the entire front line. The Russians haven't achieved any success, and the Ukrainian armed forces continue to exhaust the Russian army, which seems endless. This is because in any offensive actions, they expand far more resources than the Ukrainian armed forces defending. The situation is more complex in the Siversk direction today. So, the occupies continue their attacks on Bilohorivka and have resumed fighting near the village of Vyimka. Additionally, the number of shelling incidents along the entire front line has increased. Looking at the geolocation map, minor tactical successes for the Russians near Bilohorivka can be observed. They are managing to advance closer to the settlement from the eastern side, with an advancement of approximately 600 meters. Destruction of their equipment is noted there, but it doesn't mean they have significantly advanced and consolidated their positions. The situation is undoubtedly challenging. But Bilohorivka remains under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces as before. In the Bakhmut direction, activity has decreased today. The occupies conducted two attacks near Ivanovsky and continue have a shallow. So it's evident that the Ukrainian armed forces are successfully holding their defense there despite the significant pressure they faced in recent days. And they are not allowing the occupies to advance towards Chasev Yar. Uh, there have been no global changes along the front line in a day, as reported by the Ukrainian armed forces from the ground. Today, February 20th, 2024, at about 9 o'clock, a missile strike was carried out on a military training ground located in the village. Trudovsko, Volnavaka district, Donetsk region. 
This facility provided training for military personnel of the 39th Separate Guards Motorized Rifle Brigade, Military Unit. 35390, Yuzno Sokolinsk. The rocket attack came at a time when military personnel were forming up at the training ground. The strike was carried out by three HIMARS MLRS missiles. In the Avdiivka direction, there is a significant increase in activity. In a day, they conducted 10 attacks. The Russians are attempting to push the Ukrainian armed forces out of Stepove, Severne, and Lastochkina. The Ukrainian armed forces are doing everything to hold the defense, and thus the fighting has been ongoing for the second day in this settlement. Additionally, it's evident that the occupiers are intensively shelling Tonenke and Orlivka to break the Ukrainian armed forces' positions and advance further. Attacks on Nevelske are also ongoing, but um, there have been no changes along the front line in a day. In the direction of Marienka, the occupiers continue their assaults on Georgievka, the village of Pobeda, and Novomikhailovka. Today, the general staff doesn't confirm the Ukrainian armed forces' retreat from the village of Pobeda. And according to official statements, fighting is ongoing there. However, the Russians continue to claim in their reports that the Ukrainian armed forces have withdrawn. The armed forces of the Russian Federation knocked out the main forces of the enemy from the village of Pobeda, the Kakol retreated towards the village of Kostyantinivka and regrouped forces in positions south of Pobeda. On the territory of the settlement of Pobeda, a mop-up operation and suppression of the focal resistance of the underdogs is underway. Overall, let's not rush to conclusions. I think everything will become clear in a few days. In the Vuhlidar direction, Russian activity persists. A large number of shallow incidents continue along the entire front line, and offensive actions continue towards Zolotaniva and Prochestika. However, the Ukrainian forces are breaking up all Russian formations still in the fields without reaching their populated areas, and the situation remains under the control of the Ukrainian armed forces. In the Zaporizhia direction, uh, besides their offensive actions in Robotine, the occupiers have decided to attempt to cut off all roads in this direction again and are storming positions of the Ukrainian armed forces from Novokopivka to Malatokmachka. The situation there is complex, but the Ukrainian armed forces are holding their ground and repelling attacks. Looking at the geolocation map, it's confirmed that the Russians are actively pushing towards the village of Robotina. However, the Ukrainian armed forces are capturing them right in the vicinity of the village and taking them prisoner, keeping the settlement under control of our units. So, uh, it's also worth noting that today the Russians, as before, are heavily shelling Nikopol, Marganets, and other villages in this area from the direction of Energodar. So, it seems they fear that from there, the Ukrainian forces might launch an offensive towards the Zaporizhia power plant and regain control of it. In the Kherson direction, the occupiers are shelling the entire right bank and aviation is being used again. Additionally, the occupiers continue periodic attempts to storm the settlement of Krynke, but the Ukrainian armed forces, as before, maintain control of this foothold and don't retreat. Although the occupiers have been claiming since yesterday that they suddenly cleared it, 
And now everything is under their control. They even showed a video claiming they had installed flags there. Tonight, Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu reported to Russian dictator Vladimir Putin about the alleged mopping up of Krwn Ky, in the area of which there is a bridgehead of the armed forces of Ukraine on the left bank of the Kherson region. The defense forces of Ukraine called this statement falsification of facts and manipulation. The Russian occupation forces, having no success in assault operations in the left bank Kherson region, resorted to manipulation and falsification of facts. The military and political leadership of the aggressor country announced the clearing of the bridgehead on the left bank of the Dnieper. We officially inform you that this information is not true, the southern defense forces said. However, the Ukrainian side hasn't confirmed this information. Crinkles The Russians, unsuccessful in assault operations in the left bank Kherson region, announced the clearing of the bridgehead on the left bank of the Dnieper. The southern defense forces officially report that this information is not true. Moreover, Russian war correspondents also don't confirm the clearing of the village of Krinka. According to the situation in the evening of February 20, 24 in the area of Krinki, the enemy continues to hold a bridgehead in the village of Krinki. Our troops did not attempt to storm the bridgehead. Aviation by FABs with UMPK on the bridgehead in the village of Krinki was not used. The dominance of the enemy's artillery from the high right bank of the Dnieper remains. Overall, as always, Putin's administration reports that everything is fine to avoid removing the commander from the office. However, in reality, they will now try with all their might to squeeze out the Ukrainian armed forces to truly clear the village. So let's see how events unfold further. And that's all from me. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell to stay updated on all the latest news. Thank you for watching, and see you next time. Bye-bye.